Hello and welcome to this video about choropleth maps. Choropleth maps are used uh, very often in geography lessons. Um, they're very easy to read and we use them to present data. So in this video we're going to look at uh, what is a choropleth map, um, the advantages of using them, the disadvantages, and then you're going to have a go, a little bit of practice to check that you understand. So let's begin. So here we can see three different maps at three different scales. Okay, so here we've got a global map, okay, the red one over here. Here we have a national map, and this is the United States. And here we've got a much more local map, and this shows London. Now, they all have different colors, but they all have something in common. And you may have noticed already that a choropleth map uses shading to show data on a map. Okay, so for example, if we look at the map of London here, uh, the darker the shade, the higher the value. So the, the darker the shade on here, the darker the blue in this map, the more people live in that part of London. So the key thing about a choropleth map is that it uses shading to show data on a map. So why do we use choropleth maps and what are the advantages? Before we begin, here we have another choropleth map which shows uh, life expectancy for men in England, which is this area here, of course, and London down here. Okay, now London obviously isn't the south of England. London is exactly here where I'm pointing, but because it's quite hard to see on this map, they've uh, done a, a larger version uh, just down here. Okay, so the first obvious advantage of a choropleth map is it's very easy to read. If we have a look at this choropleth map here, we can see instantly these areas in, uh, that have been circled in red have a much higher life expectancy. So we might say Southern England um, and also parts of the Midlands as well. However, conversely, we can also see the lowest, lowest life expectancy is in the North of England and that's up here. So it's very easy to read. And it doesn't take very long to do that. It can also be done at different scales. So here we have a map of England. So here we have a national scale. Um, but we've also got a local scale map of London. Okay, so it can be done globally, nationally, and also locally. And the final advantage is that in our key, which is up here, um, the groupings in the key, the numbers that you use can be adapted to reflect the different values. Okay, so here they've gone uh, from 55 at the bottom, the lowest value, up to 70.3 years as the highest value. But there are some really big disadvantages about using choropleth maps. First one is that it assumes the whole area has the same value and therefore it doesn't really allow for variation. So what do I mean by that? Let's have a look at Canada. So Canada is here, where I'm pointing at the moment. We can see that Canada has a life expectancy of over 85 years. Okay, so on average, people in Canada live above 85 years. But does that mean that everybody in Canada, in all different parts of Canada, live to the same life expectancy? The answer, of course, is no. So in fact, in some parts of Canada, the western side, for example, may have a lower life expectancy and people may live beyond 85 in the eastern side of Canada. But from this map, it's very hard to work out that information. So that's the key disadvantage. Another key problem is that changes along boundaries are very abrupt. So if we look at this map, here we have Algeria, where I'm pointing now, and to the south of that, we have Mali. Now, according to this map, Algeria has a life expectancy approaching 80, 80 years, somewhere between 75 and 80 years, whereas Mali has a life expectancy that's closer to 60 years. In reality, crossing that line doesn't mean life expectancy drops by 20 years. It will be a much more gradual change. Okay, so the problem is that changes along boundaries are very abrupt. And the last problem, not so much of a problem with this map, but if, the, if all of the, uh, the um, countries are colored in the same color, but with different shades, it might be quite hard to distinguish between the shading of the same color. So if there's lots of different blues, it might be quite hard to see uh, which blue you're looking for. Okay, now time for some practice. So we have a map here of the boroughs in London, and there are four questions I'd like you to have a go at with the marks in brackets after each question. 
So can you pause your video now for five minutes to have a go at these questions in three, two, one. Okay, welcome back. Um, here are the answers to those questions. Um, so name three London boroughs where rent is between 1,250 and £1,500 a month. It could be any of the bor uh, boroughs that are in yellow. Okay, so Brent, Barnet, Haringey, Newham and Greenwich and Kingston. What is the average rent price in the London borough of Wandsworth? We need to find Wandsworth. Wandsworth is just south of the river over here. Okay, that's orange. So if we look at the key, that's 1,500 to 2,000 pounds per month. State one advantage of using Corbett maps to present data. As we said earlier, it's very easy to spot patterns. So the obvious pattern here is the closer to the center you are, uh, the higher the rent. And finally, explain one problem with this method of presenting data. Corbett maps don't show variation within each borough, so the data may be misleading. So if we look at Barnet, for example, over here, um, it doesn't mean that all of the properties in Barnet will be this rent. In some parts of Barnet, they may be much higher. In some parts, they may be much lower. However, a choropleth map does not show that. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. If you have any more questions, please speak to your geography teacher.